With me today is Elliot Spencer, and you are the founder and CEO of uh, uh, ViewStop. ViewStop has been recently on uh, AppSumo, and you still are there, right? Uh, we are still on AppSumo, yep. We're doing the annual deal with them right now. Okay. Uh, so we are live now, so we're recording. I'm uh, uh, Gennady Batrakov, I'm the founder of Blogly. And the primary purpose of discussion to know more about what you do, uh, how you do it, all the AppSumo founders who I interview, I am interested to know what do they do. And I just want to get to the bottom and get some behind the scenes information. Cool. Sounds like a plan. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, tell about your history. How you end up on the AppSumo? Oh, yeah. So um, we started you know, developing our software in 2019. And we, you know, essentially launched our beta at the end of 2019. And everything was going crazy in Q1 with uh, COVID. And so we started receiving a lot of demand uh, for our virtual event platform. Uh, we've always been a hybrid solution. So we handle registration for in-person events as well as online content and events. And um, we were actually uh, contacted by AppSumo and they asked that we you know apply and then it seemed like a good enough opportunity for us you know a huge uh huge advantage uh in terms of gaining early customer feedback mm. and so that was one thing that we really were looking for being that our software was you know just launched and it was a uh it was a great experience i mean we were flooded with um early advocates and it was it was really amazing to hear all of their input and for them to, you know, give us great ideas. And then we had a lot of great traction with uh, with signups, right? So, um, interesting. There were there were some other platforms that I think uh, jaded them a little bit uh, with their overall, um, you know, experience with AppSumo, and they had purchased other platforms that that didn't work out. And so we did hear a little bit of that and we, we assured them that's not us, right? Well, we won't ever change your deal uh, type of stuff. So that was fun. But uh, overall, we we really were grateful to, mm -hmm. to be on the platform. And we've continued, like you said, to have a, an ongoing deal with AppSumo. So uh, we only have one code available now as opposed to the five that we had before. Um, so a little bit more streamlined. Um, but yeah, it was uh, overall a great, great program to be a part of. How did you end up in the events? Yeah, I understand, if I understand correctly, um, your app is basically, um, uh, who are they, your primary competitors? Eventbrite? Yeah, Eventbrite uh, is a great competitor for us. Uh, they are indirectly you know, competing because they only handle the in-person registration, right? Um, so of course this year for them has been kind of tough. Uh, and I would say really any platform that helps with event management would be a competitor to us. You know, we of course, handle a lot of the virtual event side. So sports, concerts, there's a lot of niche players in each one of those categories. Mm -hmm. um, also conferences, business events, industry coaches, you'll see different platforms in each one of those, whether it be a learning management software mm -hmm. or a streaming provider, um, even YouTube, Facebook, uh, Patreon, because we do allow our customers to you know, sell merchandise, to offer donation-based ticketing um, and as well. So you might consider Twitch or mm -hmm. Udemy uh, we also have seen hop in as, as a, you know, front runner, they've done a ton of fundraising this year. Um, and so, yeah, we have a number of competitors, but what we offer is, um, the ability to get started within a couple of minutes. We do a revenue share model. We have no third party advertising, uh, that, that we put on the platform. That's not how you make money on our platform, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a, it's a pay-per-view solution and, uh, we have a white label component, which is truly differentiated as well as we have a registration API. So if you are using any other platforms, uh, you have the ability to use us as well to fulfill the virtual side of your event uh, while selling your tickets through through another channel. Hmm. So that's just, you know, the tip of the iceberg. But that's a couple of reasons why ViewStub is poised to kind of grow. Interesting. So my question, next question is, I mean, I'm in a small business. I mean, I have a SaaS business, too. Okay. I'm just wondering how your app can benefit me. I understand that I'm not doing like huge events. And actually, I don't do any events, but I would love to if it's possible, possibility will be there. But tell me how the small business, the small operators like me, so or like somebody else who is on AppSumo, there is a lot of AppSumo uh, people uh, in this, some kind of business, how they can benefit. 
yeah, those are our partners. Those are the ones that we love to work with every single day, uh, whether it be an independent uh, business owner, industry coach, right? That has a small operation or a small team and they're doing, you know, a one day seminar uh, online or in person. Uh, we love to help those customers every single day. We have a number of them have done over $100,000 in a couple months in uh, revenue for their, you know, seven hour um, you know, training session, right? So that's just one example. Um, we have authors right now who are selling uh, digital copies of their book, right? And they're selling a physical copy of their book with with a promotion. Hmm. And uh, we are also, you know, helping the event organizers who might be a meeting planner and have several clients, right? So they'll actually resell the product and they'll write us into those contracts and say, you're going to use ViewStub as your uh, your solution, your your software provider. And we give them the opportunity to share in that revenue as well. So we'll give them either a discount on the site or we'll do a retail wholesale model where they'll get they'll get the, um, the software at a discount and they'll be able to use it for their customers um, or pass along the, uh, the discount to them and, and upsell it for the margin. So um, we have the agency model is kind of what I would call that. Um, mm-hmm. So customers are using our platform with the white label so that it's not branded. Mm-hmm. And then um, if you are a venue, Right. Or a, or a larger event organizer, like I said, who has another registration platform, we can help you to to host on your own website, uh, the pay-per-view side of it. Or if you're not using another provider, we can actually help you with the full checkout process um, mm-hmm. and emails so, and everything. Uh, but what is the primary difference between uh, like what's unique about the, um, the view stop and say they differentiate from the event bright? Yeah, um, Eventbrite is very is very nice because it's simple and easy to use, and it's a self managed software. Um, but they don't have anything virtual, right? So they don't have any video player. They have no ability to stream. They have no ability to you know have a playlist, event playlist. You can't really upsell inside of that platform. Uh, there's you know not a live chat. Th- those types of interactive components, right? So we're a truly hybrid event platform. Uh, so we have you know both sides of that coin. Uh, and so that that's the main differentiation there, as well as we have the white label. I think that most of their embedded solutions have the branding. Uh, we we both have affiliate links. I think affiliate links are great uh, for for our customers. Um, but yeah, Eventbrite is a truly you know uh, one sided registration platform, right? It's it's meant to sell tickets and and they have tremendous reach, right? Which is great. Uh, and we also are getting to that point where we're getting great reach. I mean, we're being scraped by Google every day and other uh, distribution platforms that are sending our events out into the uh, event calendars of the world. So we hope to always help our customers in that way too. Interesting, but the event is a one, it's a deal that has the end uh, uh, life. I mean, it's not forever. So event has a starting point and ending point. So during this event, this is when the app is being used by the attendees, as I understand correctly. And after the event is over, the, this is it, right? There is no more of any kind of interaction. That's the exciting part, right? Is that uh, <laughs> we like to say that the event is never over, right? You have the ability to sell your products forever. We extend that product life cycle and we extend it globally as well, because with video, um, you can watch a replay, right? Just because the event happened yesterday, uh, it's actually still available today. Right. And that's the big key component of what we have is uh, 48 hours access, 10 week access. You get to set how long you want your attendee to be able to watch this. Can you use uh, like forever? I mean, access to the people who attend it? Yeah, you can do forever if you'd like. Um, you will just need to update it every year uh, for that customer right now. We're actually looking at adding the forever feature. Um, but when we launched, we didn't uh, do that just because we weren't really sure about the cost. But uh, I think we will launch a forever feature. We just um, currently are doing that on a custom basis. So if, if you need that and you're a sub customer, just let us know. So let's say if I'm interested to set up some kind of like a learning uh, thing for, for my application. So in this case, I set up like some kind of seminar or, um, and create the event. Uh, it's not gonna be uh, like, it's not the webinar, right? It's not the same, it's webinar is just a, what, say one hour and this is it, right? Uh, this is uh, much more than a webinar. So it's an event that can have uh, maybe a few days or could be weeks, like you said, maybe a, a month or more. Sure. It, it will span all the way from a webinar, right? So we actually, you can use ViewStub for free right now and host a webinar, right? And you can have up to 150 people if you want in the webinar and you can do up to uh, two hours. Hold on. Um, so that's so do, you mean, do you mean your your application can be used like a webinar? 
Absolutely. Yeah. And we're actually very agnostic, right? So we have our own video conferencing software built in. So if you're looking for a Zoom like experience, we have that, yeah. right? So you can host your own breakout room. You can host your own hangout, right? With us. Yeah. But the cool part is that you can also bring in any other software solution that you're looking uh -huh. to use. You made me now. Uh, you made me now think of the application. So you're saying it's like your software can act like a webinar software, but it goes even beyond that, right? Right. So our software will automatically create a replay uh, for on-demand access, right? Okay. And so you can also record on your own device if, if that's what you're looking to do. So um, if you are using Zoom and you want to push that into ViewStub, then you would, of course, just push record on Zoom and have that experience for yourself. Uh-huh. Uh, okay. All right. With us, we automatically record it, uh, and then you can choose to make that available or not. Uh, wow. So that's yeah. Next question is because I stumbled before with the, some, I was looking uh, uh, before for the webinar software and uh, there are some, some good software out there, but first of all, they are expensive. And another thing is uh, complex. Com some of them are complex as hell. <laughs> I mean, right. I'm looking at this, they got a, so many configurations and everything. So uh, your software, what you're saying is can be used like a webinar software. It has a recordings. It's scheduled the recordings as well. Uh, yes. Can I set up the meetings? You're saying how many people can fit in? 150 at one time. So as an attendee, right? So attendees. I'm watching. Yeah, I'm watching I'm at the same time. At the same. Now time. those 150 attendees can each be pulled into separate breakout rooms as well. So that that's one key component. But if you are doing it um, with Zoom or any other platform. Because those are separate platforms, you would need to invite them to participate into those. Like if you're using StreamYard, I think they they let you do up to 10, right? 10 or 12. And so mm -hmm. you would invite them as speakers. And so what's really cool is a lot of our organizers are selling that as a premium uh, access, right? So you can buy as an attendee for, uh, let's say it's $149 for your ticket. But if you want to be a part of the action, we're going to give you the Zoom link and you won't be just watching, you'll be participating. And that's going to be, you know, $300 ticket. Right, so there, there's a lot of flexibility in what we have in the in the ability to really segment your audience in different ways, mm -hmm. uh, and as well, you know, if you have a multi-day conference, uh, you can actually segment just individual days. Excuse me, I think mm -hmm. someone's phone. Mm -hmm. It might be mine. Sorry about that. I have to let it roll out. It's not showing up though because we're in the Zoom. Anyway. Um, we, you know, have the ability for really any type of content or any type of event, right? We have podcasters right now who are doing weekly shows and they're asking for donations and they're doing $5,000 a week in, in revenue, right? We have um, people that are selling docu-series and they're selling, hey, you can watch this as a rental streaming for 48 hours. Um, so we really like to refer to ourselves as the Shopify for online content and events, because you mentioned these other webinar softwares, they're complicated. They have huge upfront costs. We don't have those, right? Uh, mm -hmm. We don't have any really upfront costs unless you want um, the white label, which is a premium feature. And then we have the ability for you to use the software and get going in a couple of minutes, right? I mean, it's, it's very simple and easy to use. Uh, uh, and it's meant to be agnostic is the other key component there, so. Now, another question, let's say, for my personal needs, of course, I would need uh, some kind of like a like a type of webinar, but webinar is usually free. I'm not expecting to charge uh, for the webinar. Let's say if I organize like learning event, uh, which is like a learning webinar is a learning event, right? So can I do that on your platform? Again, you yeah, it's it's um, it's all free at that point. Uh, and we you know, we love those customers as well. I think the real value in what we have is when you are looking to host a uh, a, a paid event, right? If you're looking to do any type of like award gala, gala um, and you want to uh, fundraise for charity, or you know you want to you know monetize your content, and and we really promote that because we we know that the the market is used to free, right? And there's this premium concept, and you know oh my content should be free because that's what YouTube says, and, and then YouTube is going to pay me seven dollars or seven hundred dollars if I get a million views or you know a hundred thousand subscribers, and and we think that whole model is backwards. Right. Um, we think that if you have valuable content that you should charge for it. So if I gave you a book, right, and I gave it to you for free, right, you might not read it. You might browse through it. But if I ask you to pay one dollar for that same book, you're going to read the whole thing and you might read it twice and you might give it to your friend. Right. Because you've assigned 
value to it. Same thing. With yeah, video. usually pe when the people yeah. get for free, they don't give enough. If I, if, I, if I send you a 30 second video or a 30 minute video, you might skim through it, right? If you paid a hundred dollars for that video, you're going to watch the whole thing. You're going to take notes and you're going to make sure you schedule time to watch the whole thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's what we tell our customers. And that's what they started to realize is that I can charge the same price for an online ticket as I can for an in-person ticket. Um, because I'm saving one on a hotels and travel and my time and I don't have to leave the state, all that kind of stuff. Right. But also I have the ability to watch it later. I have the convenience of being able to watch it on demand. Um, and so we have some customers who are even charging more for you to watch online than you would if you came in person. Obviously, okay. COVID is, uh, is a weird you know, factor right now. And, but, uh, but let's say for my application, let's say if I buy now this code, is you only selling one code, right? Yes, we only have one code anymore. Yep. So if I buy one code, what do I get? Do I get, let's say, like exactly my application? I want to have a learning events that I want to give the explanation and and teaching people how to use, say, my application. And yep. what, how I can do that? See, can you adapt to my flow? Yeah, in your scenario where you're not really charging, the first three wouldn't really make sense because those are discounts on the revenue share, right? So if you're not generating any revenue, right, right. it doesn't really matter, right? The fourth one is huge because you bump up your allowable free attendees, right? Mm -hmm. So now um, you can do per event up to 2,500 people, right? Okay. And so that's a huge raise from 250 all the way to 25, you know, 10x on the number of people at the that same you time, no? No, all at this in one event, yeah. One event, uh, but there will be will is it the video will be streaming on demand, right? So anybody who log in, they stream on demand video, right? If if they have uh, registered, correct. So it would cap out at twenty five hundred. Okay. How about the reminders? Let's say if I looking at the from perspective, like my my flow is really small, so I'm not big at the events. Uh, like huge events, I don't organize any kind of like uh, uh, huge seminars. But what I want for my, uh, think of my s smaller side perspective. I'm again, I run, I run the uh, application that I want to my people to learn and use it. So for that, I organize like a webinar type, and I want to do it as many as possible. And I want to also have this uh, webinar. I mean, this kind of uh, uh, learning like like webinar like on a, some kind of schedule when the people can sign up when the people can see in a such and such day this uh, this event is gonna happen and this is what we're going to do and here's my like one hour of learning presentation uh of the application can i do that that's perfect yeah you would have your own profile page with you stab if you chose to use our landing pages and it would highlight all of your videos um, you can schedule them out you can make them private and public whenever you want you can have a series of videos you can keep all of your videos inside of one event. If you wanted to charge a subscription to that event series, right, then they would pay monthly to have access to all of the videos. All of that is capable, right? Um, and the true value, I think, in this plan, right, is that if you weren't to buy this plan, you would be paying us for the white label, right? So you'd be paying us for advanced payouts, right? You're not really doing advanced payouts, I guess, but um, you would also get the, um, the ability for yourself to have the in-browser encoding. So those small breakout rooms, um, that's something that's included in the software as well. And you'll have um, an unlimited number of events. You'll have the affiliate links. You'll have the QR code scanning tool. If you're doing in person, um, you'll get the analytics and you'll get uh, to be able to export all of your registration data. All of that would be included either way. I think the Very huge nice. value here is if you're using the white label, right? I think that's the one key component here is you'll pay one ninety nine one one time for life, right? And you'll be, you'll deal. be able to avoid that monthly fee uh, and, that we have. White let me ask you are you have okay i do have a zoom my own zoom but do you have let's say if i wouldn't have a zoom let's say if i don't pay zoom some people don't have a zoom because uh to get the really good i mean all the features you gotta have a paid account not everybody have a uh, um, the paid account on zoom can this one do you have your own like uh, recording software video recording software yes yeah, so it's uh it's a uh... It's not going to download directly to your device. It's going to stay inside of ViewStub and it'll uh -huh. be available to you there. So you don't, we don't necessarily give you the file right now. That's something that we did do for a while and we had to turn it off because we launched with a new, um, it's a, it's technical, but we're going to bring it back. But right now you cannot actually download okay. your own. But I can video. record it. I can upload it, my videos, right? 
correct. Yeah, you can upload as many videos as you'd like into our software and you can do as many streams as you want at the same time. So you can actually have a stage with multiple camera angles and the person can choose and pick between the different perspectives that they want to watch. So if I'm a viewer, I can say, wow, I would love to see what's going on in the back of the room. I would love to see what's going on on stage. And then we also support 360 video, uh, which is not that popular, but if anyone is doing 360 video, uh, we'd love to, to love to support yeah, the real estate. Stage. Usually want to do that. Usually yeah, somebody exactly. who sells the houses, they want to do the 360. But... Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think it's a great value uh, because I'm thinking even now adapted for my own flow because, well, I don't do, I mean, like events, but because the first thing when I saw that, I was just saying, oh, this is just events. And I was thinking, okay, Maybe maybe I grow later when I grow later into events, then it will be useful. But right now I can see, I think I may utilize it even like for the webinar type where I can set up my own rooms and get the schedules, invites. Do I have invites as well? Yes. Yeah. So it's all, it's reminders. all email based. You can reminders. email. Yeah. Reminders will come up uh, before the event starts. All that's done um, by automatically through the software. You can also send individual emails as you'd like, you know, so you can send them whenever you want uh, to, oh. you know, specific ticket types or individuals or to groups. And um, yeah, we, you know, we would love to support you in that way. And um, you, you hit the nail on the head. We, we do talk a lot about events, I think, because that was, you know, our lowest hanging fruit for our customers. But yeah. what we realized is that it's more than that. We have, like I said, podcasters and people that are selling movies and books. And yeah, why don't you? Why don't you say about that? Because all I'm seeing is, oh, is this for like huge organization enterprises? They may do this kind of thousand people events. Real, I don't do this. But what I want to do, like something more, really on a smaller scale, where I can manage my learning, learning, uh, like my learning hub. And then I can invite people like a webinar. So webinars are important. So a schedule, but people will come in, they may see this video and maybe some other videos behind it also available for them. So it would be cool. Yeah, we have, you know, we have constantly evolved, right? And we've constantly just taken in as much feedback as we can from our customers. When we initially launched, we were really a creator focused platform. We used to, you know, talk a lot about creators, right? YouTubers and Mm -hmm. those types of um, what we realized is that what we had was working really well for those those events that you said. And um, then we didn't necessarily forget about those other customers. But from a marketing standpoint, we really had to stay in one lane for it to make sense for, for most people. Um, and so to your point, yes, uh, we're actually in the process of doing a little bit of brand uh, um, updating, let's call it. And so uh, one term that does come out a lot is like we're the Shopify for online content and, and events, right? Mm-hmm. So it's it's um, more that, you know, we can sell merchandise, we can sell your online content for you, we can host your online content if it is free, uh, but we can also help you with in-person events and registration. So mm. it's hard to explain because it's not only event management. Like you said, it's a software that you can use on your own website or using our websites to restrict access, let's call it, right? So you're really just restricting access or you're creating a paywall of some sort uh, to be able to accept donations or subscri- oh. uh, subscriptions or whatever it is, right? So we have promo codes, we have custom questions that you can ask, you can ask their t-shirt size, their address. We've built all that out. Um, so it's hard for us to explain because no one's ever seen it before. Like it, no one's seen anything like this before. So we try to compare ourselves to a couple other platforms um, but what we've done is we've yeah. just built it so flexible and so agnostic that it really fits into oh, anyone's nice. market. How about the integrations? Sales. How about the integrations? I mean, just the last, I know we have a time coming up, but tell me about integrations, how I can integrate with my CRM platform. And then exactly. probably everybody has a different one. So, yeah. So the first integration that we launched was the registration one. So we can actually pull registrations from any other platform. And then the ones that were we're launching actually before the end of this year uh, are the CRMs. So um, we're going to have a Zapier and we're going to have a, an actual ViewStub API as well that will tap into each of the uh, CRMs. Will you have will you have other us outside of I mean other than the Zapier? Zapier I know Zapier is big, but Zapier has become too expensive and too many uh, too complex. So yeah. even right now, I mean I'm I have a lot of people who complains about that, and they all pushing me to do something else like uh, uh, integrately and publicly and also I'm looking actually personally I love IFTTT or IFT I don't know yeah, which way is it yeah, are you great. are you here local I mean uh, yeah 
you are in Florida, but the uh, the uh, if it is in uh, San Francisco here, so okay. they just they just announced the paid version of if, and this is where they going to I think they going to expand. Do you have any plans for if maybe because if I think they have a lot more uh, potential. They're they're definitely on our list. Um, one thing that we're we're focused on is always being agnostic. That's that's our number one, you know, kind of uh, you know front runner type of concept that we go for is uh, wanting to be agnostic. So that's why we do the Zoom integration, right? We have a direct integration with Zoom for you to push your your stream right into ours, right? And it'll, yeah. it'll seamlessly pull over. Um, we also have all the RTMP. So if you are using OBS or Wirecast or any other platform, you know, we want we want that, right? So if if anything you can put on your screen. Will display, uh, and then we did the registration API, and we also have um, on the roadmap to have our own API that will connect to all of the different CRMs. Is the next step for us? So all the sales um, and email marketing, like Mailchimp and um, Salesforce, being the two biggest ones, of course. So yeah, all of that's on our um, on our roadmap, and we're going to continue to develop those out. Uh, and the specific platforms like Zapier and If This Then That are, are also on that roadmap as well. But we want to have our own API that can pull and push. And so yeah. that's what we are launching. So it'll be it'll be pretty flexible in terms of where you can use it. All right. Yeah, it was quite useful, and I was surprised that you have a lot more than I expected. So it's actually it's pretty good. I'm gonna actually try myself and see how I can adapt it for my little niche. <laughs> that's it. That's what we want. We want to help you. So that's uh, you know, View Stuff is here to partner with anybody and everybody. Yeah. Thank you very much. And uh, Spencer, it was uh, great to meet you. And let's stay in touch and uh, I see if uh, somehow maybe can think you on somehow to adopt it for Blogly. I don't know that maybe my customers will tell me maybe something can be done. I don't know. So we'll see. Yeah. And we're, we're rolling out an agency model soon. So I'd love to talk to you more about that. So Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bye. Mm -hmm.